Before the break, we heard from General Motors CEO Fritz Henderson on the company's first earnings report since exiting bankruptcy. For her take on the numbers and Henderson's comments, we're joined over the telephone by noted auto analyst Marianne Keller, who started her own firm after analyzing the industry for more than 25 years on Wall Street. Marianne, let's talk about the earnings numbers to begin with, and then we'll get into Fritz Henderson. Company saying it lost $1.2 billion on a managerial basis, non-GAAP numbers. Fritz Henderson told us that that's ahead of schedule. Put it in perspective for us. How much, how encouraging are these numbers, if at all? Um, I think the numbers are encouraging because I think, I, I, you know, looking at them more broadly than just what the bottom line was, because uh, we were all warned on Friday by General Motors not to make too much of this bottom line uh, number and try to think of it as a gap number. It isn't. It's what they're calling it a managerial um, financial statement. Uh, so it's non-gap. They're going to file gap in um, in March. The um, but I think that the, the fact is they came out of bankruptcy into a relatively good vehicle market. They were able to go back into production fairly quickly because the dealers didn't have inventory after cash for clunkers. And, uh, and, and I think what it demonstrates is that the government gave General Motors a reorganized balance sheet that uh, got rid of a lot of liability. So, so they were, if they couldn't have improved uh, their liquidity in the, in the third quarter, uh, I don't think bankruptcy would have done its job. So I think that, you know, they, they're, um, uh, this was not a surprise. All right, let's talk, though, about what does appear to be a surprise, GM's plan to begin repaying U.S. taxpayers and Canadian taxpayers, for that matter, ahead of schedule. They weren't due to make a payment till 2015. Now they're going to start paying a billion dollars a quarter. Uh, Fritz says he's very comfortable with GM's liquidity position. How do you feel about it all? Um, I think that, again, um, coming out of bankruptcy, one would have expected that they would have had a little extra cash cushion. Uh, I think that they are going into a vehicle market that is um, improving somewhat. Uh, I'm happy to see that his forecast is not, you know, wildly optimistic for next year. I think it's reasonable. Uh, so I, I do think that uh, uh, it's it, – plus their European operation – their overseas operation, which is a European is still obviously a loss, but China, Brazil, it's elsewhere – uh, are also throwing off liquidity. So being able to repay probably what was an excess amount of money at the, at the outset uh, is, is a good thing. Marianne, it sounds like in general you're underwhelmed by what you've heard <laughs> so far today, both from the CEO Fritz Henderson and what you've seen in the company's press release. But you just alluded to some strong sales trends in China, in North America. I mean, is this what we should be taking away if we're looking for a bright spot? Is this what's helping the company get a little bit more cash. Um, absolutely. I, I wouldn't say that I'm underwhelmed. I'm, I'm going to say that I think that this was predictable. You'd expect that a company coming out of bankruptcy would have had all of its ducks in a row. This is their first operating quarter under that condition, and I'm not at all surprised that they have better liquidity. As far as the rest of the world, uh, China has been on a tear this year. And uh, GM is certainly a beneficiary of the incredible strength in the Chinese auto market. So. Uh, that is also part and parcel of what we're seeing here. Uh, Marianne, what of all we've heard this morning do you think is coming from Fritz Henderson and what's coming from the new chairman, Ed Whitaker? How much of an impact is he having on the company since he joined? Well, I, you know, the numbers are the numbers. I think the impact Ed Whitaker is having is, uh, is a positive one because I think he's making uh, GM shed its lethargic past, and I think that that's really the key. I mean, this company does seem to have uh, a fire lit under it and uh, is, uh, is making decisions faster. I mean, just, you know, with respect to Opal, uh, they were going to sell it because that was the old GM. Uh, it was probably a, a, a competitive disadvantage to lose Opal, which the new board saw and, uh, and acted accordingly. So I think that uh, there's certainly operational influence in, uh, in, in how GM is moving today. I think the, the numbers themselves don't tell you that because the numbers are the numbers. You know, they just tell you about production. Uh, Marianne, I'm afraid we're running out of time. Uh, I want to thank you very much for joining us. Marianne Keller, uh, she is an independent auto analyst.